And there's a Cassiopeia ban against Frozen, of course, uh, known for that champion, and uh, Zareth as well. But Zareth not so much of a threat. Not at the moment, not the current Any longer, matter. and CJ Entis showing that they know how to deal with that. Zareth pick up quite well. Oh yeah, I mean, when you even have a gank by Mom, you know, yep. possibly the best Zareth in the world struggling, you know it's time to maybe uh, think about a different pick in the mid lane. Okay, well, Hecarim removed for Shy. Now, Nar banned from Lilac. Are they going to first pick the Maokai here? Nar and Maokai have him go to champions for Lilac. It could also be a Rumble pick if they're trying to deny the Nar as a possible counter pick in the laning phase. I just wonder if we're going to see more of the uh, the Smite top lane today. Probably. It's so good right now. KT really doing a good job of playing out that strategy the last time we saw it. And there is Rek'Sai taken out. Yeah, with how that uh, top smite Hecarim did yesterday and how Shy has done previously on Hecarim, I think that's a good ban from IM to get that out of the way. Now we'll see what CJ decides to use for their final ban. Maybe just something like, I was going to say Thresh, but Sivir works as well too. Bit surprising there that they would be that worried about the Sivir pick. See if they set themselves up for a per first pick Sejuani. Well, what direction they want to lean. No LeBlanc bans yet either. Yeah. That's a little troubling for both of these teams. There it is. Okay. Ooh, Diana would be an interesting first pick. It'd be pretty bold. Coco yeah, had a good game on Diana, but couldn't quite pull it off in the end against the GE Tigers. But he got quite a few kills before CJ made some positioning mistakes in the late game that caused them to fall behind. And Callista still up also. I would imagine this is going to be the first pick. Very true. Now we just need to see the Callista Blitzcrank lane. Oh, maybe going for the first pick Sejuani instead. Uh, considering how good Ambition is at Nunu, I think that Callista should be a little bit higher priority here for CJ Entis. Yeah, but will Sansa okay. play? Wow, okay, first pick Urgot instead. A lot of champions left up this game because yeah. of the Gnar and the Sivir bans, and the Hecarim ban as well. These are not common bans that we see. So because they're more pocket bans, now Lilac almost certainly going to take away that Maokai. Well, that's the only champion he's been able to do anything of note on. So. I agree, but Maokai Kalista, two very powerful champions to give over. Of course, you can take the Sejuani now if you want it. And with Frozen's Urgot play in the mid lane, of course, this is a flex pick. Oh space. boy. Might well take it as an AD carry champion. And Shy could play that top lane rise. Certainly Marin has been playing a lot of it in solo queue. Well, we could see Ambition take that Nidalee to the jungle, perhaps. Oh yeah, there we go. Ambition on his three year anniversary. Will he play a Cloud Templar tribute game with the Amumu jungle? And Shy might get Rumble, which is also yeah, completely I'm terrifying. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, Garner, lock it in. This is Trolley Cloud Templar right now. So, Nunu and Rumble, good combination for CJ. Yep. Champions that they were very successful with in their last match. And really shying away from that Sejuani, surprisingly. Yeah, well, Ambition, like you mentioned earlier, is very comfortable on that Nunu. But it does give the Sejuani over to I Am, and that's, you know, one of those champions that's just so strong then, it's so easy to play right. Yeah, but if you run we'll double see. 80 carries with this Nunu, if you have that Urgot in the mid lane and then have something else at the bottom, you do get more targets for that Nunu to blood boil. So it, I think it may make a little bit more sense. They've got great poke already. True. And they have good initiation with Equalizer from Rumble. So they don't necessarily need a Sejuani ult to engage. Would you, would you consider an Ezreal in the mid lane, an Urgot at ADC? You could do either way. All right. That's not what that mid lane pickup is, but both Urgot and Ezreal will function similarly in the mid lane. But they're gonna have to show a matchup right here, and of course... Whoa, okay, I am doing the I am thing. I wonder if that's gonna be, I was gonna say support Jungle Aurelia. Nautilus, but yeah, will be support Aurelia. Unless it's support Maokai. Tucson has played both, so. That is true. <laughs> Touche, sir. I'm pretty sure it's support Aurelia, though. And the reason, could be the, reason, the reason why is that gives you a lot of kill pressure in the lane with Callista. Yeah, it does. And you can throw that Aurelia really, and she can get into the back line by using Blade Surge after she gets chucked into the team. And last time we saw Tucson on support Aurelia, he played it very well, but it just is terrible in the late game. It's like a worse Leona, basically. Yeah. Much worse Leona 
Yeah, the support of Relia, I mean, it's been tried a lot, but I just have never been on board. Yeah, it's been tried. After that game, it was also tried many times in China. Yeah, I just think it's bad. It is bad. I agree with you. You have to get such oh, come on, Mad Life. an Do immense it. Do it. snowball to make it worthwhile, oh. Doa, that I just, I don't see it. And we could see Jinx here, a champion very rarely cited in Korea. Well, with the new new jungle, yep, could work out just fine. And it's a bit of a cocky pick. I think it shows just how much CJ thinks they have uh, advantage-wise in the 2v2. But if they go with this flawed, that means that Space is going to just take the Urgot then. OK. So they'll do. the new new actually not going to be very useful in terms of Blood Boil this game with only an Urgot to Blood Boil. That's not great. Uh, but we'll see if they can make it work. Mad Life will be playing that Thresh again. And Coco was so good on that mid lane, Vlad, last time around. Looks like we may have a cannon in the mid lane for Frozen. Just trying to harass this Vladimir early is very difficult for Vlad to get away from Kennen too, because even if he pulls, he'll come right back up into the slicing maelstrom. Yeah, yeah the all-ins pull. are strong. And we could see reworked Cassidy as well. That would be interesting. Of course, Cassidy would be uh, very good at trading with Vlad, especially early on with the Q magic shield, but instead, could be going for that Zareth now. I just, I just don't think this is a good pick in this meta. I think that well, you're gonna CJ be is going to be so tanky yeah. that this Zareth hasn't done anything. Even games where we've seen huge Zareths like GBMs, he just hasn't been able to carry the game. Well, we saw the the best Zareth not be able to do it. I don't know if the second best Zareth is going to be able to it. Yeah, like you said, late game. You know, who is the Zareth really going to do damage to? All right, and you're going to get Abyssal if you're CJ in this situation. And you're going to get Spirit Visage onto Vlad, so aren't going to be a whole lot of targets right here. Yeah. And it looks like it will be support Maokai, actually. Oh, okay. I actually like that a lot better. I, it, so, given the choice between the two, I would pick support Maokai any day. Also, it's worth noting that this is what OMG does in China, or at least was doing earlier in the season, is when there is a rumble on the enemy team, you play support Maokai. Oh, they swapped. Okay. Well, oh. regardless. To, just because his ult damage reduction is good, even if you don't have a lot of farm on him to deal with the burst from the Equalizer. But yeah. it will be Lilac on Maokai. And the support Aurelia makes a return. We'll see if CJ wants to take a chance with this 2v2. I mean, we've seen these support Aurelias get like four kills, and it just doesn't matter. You know, you're never able to get the items to actually turn it into a carry. Right, and you still, you're going to build Righteous Glory. And, yeah. and by the late game, you don't have the CC that Leona does, and you don't have the damage. So you really, really have to get a huge lead for support Aurelia to work. Yeah. Otherwise, you just kind of have like one long stun sometimes, and right. you're kind of just bad otherwise. And it's hard to play into Thresh, too, because Thresh yeah. can just flay you out of Blade Surge. So exactly. I don't know. Well, good luck to IM. Here we go, CJ versus IM, game one. And here we go, CJ Antis versus Incredible, Incredible Miracle. And... CJ with a pretty strong tank comp, I am, you know, picking things that are proven to be not that great, picking things that are a little bit outdated. Yeah, this team is just in shambles right now. Well, they're really hoping to have a strong early game. They want to snowball with this Lee Sin and the Aurelia and the Callista, but CJ is a team that, you know, honestly, early aggression hasn't been that effective on dealing with CJ. If we look at CJ's faults, it usually arises that they're split up and they approach objectives improperly and uh, in the late game or they make bad Baron calls. If we think back to teams like Samsung that have tried to all in CJ early with things like mid Jarvan versus Vlad or a lot of their other matchups, they're pretty patient and resilient and they will just wait for their power spike to hit. Well, if you think about CJ versus Jyn Air, Jyn Air tried very hard to be aggressive early on, and CJ just used it to trap them and turn the game around really early. Yeah, yeah. CJ's a smart team, and it's difficult to... It, this is not the team I would pick to use this strategy against, though, I will say that. Well, we'll see if I am can pull it off. <laughs> well, these Ares is having a good time, it looks like. All right, well, we'll be a 2v1 up in the top side. 
So no lane swap incoming from CJ Antis. Instead, they're just going to take the Krugs. And in fact, CJ anticipating that there will be a 2v2 in the bottom side. Otherwise, they wouldn't be doing these Krugs right now. They'd be trying to freeze. So they're going to be quite surprised, actually, to see that there's a lane swap going on. So yeah. Shy actually already there getting some experience though. Meanwhile, double jungle going on for Incredible Miracle. I suppose you really can't blame them with the kill pressure that uh, Callista Irelia would have theoretically yeah. in the 2v2. Yeah, I'd be surprised too if I was CJ. I think I am tried to call the lane swap right there, uh, but they didn't find it. Madlife just walk it up, checking out, see if he can delay. Uh, they did give Lilac that blue buff just because, of course, he has mana. It's going to be much more useful with that. Yep, wow, already a lot of damage onto Shy. May not have been expecting to see them up there. Nope, and they also have a freeze. It's pushing away from him, so they have to do something about that. Coco still with that 100% mid rate. He has two games on it, though, and both were against Samsung, so don't yeah. get too excited about that. I'll try not to. You've tempered the hype, thank you. That's what I'm here to do, though. I just destroy hype. The hype wrecker? <laughs> That's what they call me. <laughs> so so uh, effective at destroying hype that you create a wake of hype in its destruction. <laughs> so the hype stream That's right. behind me. It's like the, the infinite loop of hype and anti-hype. <laughs> the wheel of hype. All right. Well, we're doing a good job of dodging a lot of these abilities. Did go boots first on Vlad, so. Yeah, generally what you see in a matchup like this. Shy able to get a lot of this experience from the wave though, even if he hasn't been able to farm very well. He's trying to break the freeze right now with his flame spitter. And I mean, we I do suppose. see Lilac down in the bottom side. Mad Life has come up top. Ambition here as well, oh. anticipating a gank as he pu pushes out. This is really good timing by Ambition and Mad Life, so. Wow, they, is Aries just gonna give this one up? Doesn't want no, to, well, he'll consume to. and smite. Yeah. Aries, though, not even wanting to fight it. Do you feel like a, a Lee Sin can 1v1 a Nunu that no. early? No. Not really? Okay. Especially not when they don't have pressure. Shy and Madlife could have easily just walked down into the river right there. There wasn't really a way for him to safely contest that, so wisely backing off. And this will break the freeze up in the top side, so good map movement so far from CJ Entis. And Space zoning out Lilac just a little bit, but Lilac not too far behind in farm yet. Using the correct Urgot skin, the giant enemy crab god. That's right. Except no substitutes, guys. <laughs> he knows what's up. Yep, that's right. In my opinion, there are no other Urgot skins. So very patient farming from CJ Antis. And uh, incredible miracle yet to do anything with this supposed early game team that we're seeing them play out. And they didn't get the 2v2, so their kill pressure not great right now. Shy, of course, with the level advantage as well from the time he spent solo before Mad Life decided to show up. But CJ just happy playing conservatively right now. They know they have the late game advantage. No need to go crazy. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they're really under no pressure right now at all. I am getting some deep wards in. And you, know, you and I have talked about this before. Uh, I am wards quite a bit, especially Ares. They do kind of split it half and half between jungler and support oftentimes. But the problem is that they have these wards and they have this information, but they oftentimes really don't use it at all. Yeah, uh, I, think, I think you're absolutely right. That is, that is a big issue with them is that they don't make the proper decisions based on the information that they have. So it can be pretty difficult. Uh, Ares getting a little bit of counter jungling done though with those wards for now anyway. So he's got that going for him. I guess he does, yep. Doa. Leaving one wolf to uh, tell the others what happened and warn them that Lee Sin is coming back <laughs> someday. Oh, and a gank in the mid lane onto Coco. Slowed down a little bit. Coco just backing off. And he's fine, not even needing to burn any summoners. Yeah, Ambition can't do this right now, no. though. He doesn't know where Maokai is. He just saw the gank in the mid lane, and Lilac Definitely acting appropriately right there. Comes in and sees that Ambition was up to some shenanigans in terms of going for that early dragon and will prevent it from being taken in spite of the fact that we did see a lot of pressure coming in. So that was actually well played by Incredible Miracle, denying that. It's kind of a fairly obvious thing to watch for though, and a new new doing an early dragon. So I'm sure they have their eye out for uh, Ambition disappearing in suspicious times. Indeed. They won't be disappearing for a while yet. He's getting followed around as well. Just wanted to see him eat the grump. Get to the grump. 
you know, in Korea, they always use the verb for to eat when they take buffs and things like that. But with Nunu, it's actually it's actually literal. <laughs> he actually does eat them. I don't know if this Lee Sin is safe doing this dragon right now. This is pretty we'll find risky. Out. I think he's going to get away with it. Now, he knows that Nunu's on the top side, but yeah. it's like he actually is surprisingly going to get away with it. That was a good time. He's slowly a chipping it down. Yeah. Even though his mid and top lane are going back right now, he's... Gonna get away with it, so wow. a bit of a misplay there from CJ, not knowing that, that was an option. Now, them, them moot listing the dragon isn't a big deal at this point in time. Do you feel like uh, they could have gotten another ward or two down to that bottom jungle to prevent that from happening? E well, yeah, especially since they were pushed up right there. They may not have had wards in the inventory. Of course, Mad Life spent a lot of time up sure. in the top side, but. He did it right after the Rift Sculler expired, too. So that was, yeah, that was, was good clever. For it, was, it was good. Yeah, there we go. Good. Using the wards for once. Nice. It was good. They got the information they needed about Ambition's location, and then we didn't see Coco or Space respond to it. Yeah. Just hand over the blue buff right after that. All right, this is not going well for Incredible Miracle, just because they need a big, big gold lead. And they need to start fighting. They need to start scrapping soon. Because the more this drag is on, the tankier that Nunu and Vladimir and Urgot are going to get, and that's not going to be a good situation for them. Well, I've got a feeling they're going to start now that they've got that 2v2 against Space and Mad Life. But Space, already level 7, it's not exactly going to be easy. No. No, it's not. Yep, in fact, they're already pushing him back. I believe, yeah. Yep, Wild Tucson getting poked pretty hard after coming in. That's really kind of about it. Bit of a passive game, but again, you know, I mean, I am not really finding too many opportunities to get more of a lead, and CJ just sitting back and waiting. Yep. And that's, that's all they need to do. That's all they need to do. So yeah. I am better try something. And they did sneak away that first dragon, but honestly, they need to fight. I mean, they've got to start fighting here. They have to start making some plays because they can't just sit around and wait for CJ to outscale them. So, you know, using that dragon that dragon to force a fight yep. or bait CJ into a fight may have been the smarter course of action than just going ahead and sneaking it away because that 6% isn't going to help you right now. Waiting for CJ. That sounds like it could be a new Adam Sandler movie. Yeah, interesting. They actually just gave the blue buff over to Ambition. Well, snowballs for days. Potentially making that decision. Bit yeah. odd. Especially considering. Okay. Oh, there we go. There's the all in. Wow, and it works. First blood goes to Tucson. Meanwhile, Space could be in a bit of trouble as well, too. He's still got the flash. He's still got the summoner heal, but he is getting low. Teleport coming down to try to save him. He flashes. He uses that heal. Here comes Shy with the equalizer. Great slow. Softstar in trouble now. What a turnaround for CJ. Can Space. Wow, he's got four legs. That means he can dodge twice as fast. And he gets out of the ultimate. Meanwhile, Coco just solos Ares in the mid lane. Wow, how did wow. Ares die right no there? Kidding. So Frozen made his move down to the bottom side. Looks like Ares was just trying to farm and got caught out of position. I, I guess so. Got all in right there. So, I mean, IM makes a play, but they do it with a, when they have a teleport disadvantage. Lilac not able to respond at all. So quickly turned around in the end. And that's a kill on Shy. So if we take a look at how this went down, Mad Life, yeah, that's a lot of damage. You have to be so careful. Tucson can really punish you if you do that, if he's maxing E. And then Space tries to get out right here. A little bit of a delayed port, but Maokai nowhere near the rumble. What a great ult right on landing. And then Ares here, I, I, Ares was not looking at his screen. That's no. what happened. And then he just dies straight up to the Hemoplague pop. You know, it was really crucial too that Equalizer kept Sonstar out of range from using that rend on space, so all those spears ended up not doing anything. Yep. It was pretty crucial. Indeed. Well, Ares was looking at that fight in bottom lane. He definitely was not looking at mid lane and got caught off guard, and there was yeah. no backup right there. And Coco knew that Frozen was immobilized and unable to help, and in it, because he was in his ult, he could see it. So, really good timing from Coco. Great all in, but sure what Ares was thinking. Well, again, you know, he's just kind of inexperienced. That's been the story since he's joined this team and started playing and getting chased back into his own jungle. Snowballs for days. Yeah, not doing a whole lot of damage, but Nunu is annoying and sticky yeah. in that way, so you have to 
like, it's like Coco's just going to take the Raptors right well, yeah. now. Yeah, he sees Ambition chasing Ares around. He's like, all right, well, I guess I can just go take this. Nobody's yep. going to stop me. Why not? Especially with Frozen back as well. It's all going very well for CJ. And just Abyssal Scepter already completed for Shy. We'll see probably another one on Coco eventually. And even though Space died, still has that higher CS total, got an assist. So he's still pretty even with Sonstar, even though he's still waiting for that tier to fully stack. Ambition just being annoying. Yep, coming down through the tri brush. Oh, Tucson coming in. But I don't know if they're going to get another opportunity like they had. Interesting. Lilac going for Righteous Glory instead of the Rod of Ages. Okay. Oh, nice hook onto Tucson. He's going to get pulled out with the Fates Call, though. Sonstar saving his support. Yeah, just trading ult for ult right there. Yep. One less thing you have to worry about later on is getting knocked up with the Fates Call. That is, I mean, the combo between Aurelia and Callista is really strong. There's no doubt about that. But That is worse, though, for uh, IM than CJ because CJ doesn't need to make kills out of that. All right, here they we go. Teleport coming down. They're going to try to make a play onto Ambition, collapsing on him in the river right now. Tucson coming in as well. Ambition. Oh, he flashes. Still totally caught. CJ, whoa, he gets out of the lantern and <laughs> brings in a member of IM. But it's still going to be two kills for incredible Oops, miracle. That actually just got bad life kill. Yeah, it did. Well, he tried. <laughs> I, I'm Nunu and I'm helping. <laughs> I brought friends. <laughs> the Lee Sid Q, the Resonating yeah. Strike, and the Twisted Advance dragging <laughs> two members of I Am right next to Mad Life. Whoops. So they lost two instead of one due to the, the fancy tricks they wanted to get done. But it looks like CJ will be able to trade a turret for the Dragon. So certainly not the end of the world. Coco also will be taking some raids. But I Am gets another Dragon. That was... <laughs> that was a pretty unfortunate situation there for CJ. <laughs> uh, I hope we get to bad see a replay of that. That was pretty like, funny. Oh, I killed myself. He's like, last time I give you the lantern, man. <laughs> see, that's what you get when you try to save teammates instead of just, like, steal their kills. I hope you learned your lesson, Mad Life. Uh, at least he didn't get space killed also. Yeah. Space did stay back in that situation. Not if this was last year, Space would have already been like in the middle of the 5v5 when that started. <laughs> or in the middle of the 1v5, rather. Well, in spite of that, though, CJ maintains a gold lead thanks to that turret. And yep. Coco starting to run away with a CS advantage as well. So, as well as Shy, actually. Well, all the lanes actually are starting to go up a little bit in CS. ADC, top lane. Space is extremely tanky. So is Tucson, though, actually. Yeah, well, he's got face of the mountain done already. So he does have that. Mad Life opting for the Sight Stone, of course, first. And this is what we've been seeing from this uh, support Aurelia, is that you don't really focus on getting that Sight Stone quickly. You get face of the mountain fast, of course. Yeah, uh, pretty much no Sight Stone. I bet you he'll go. Oh, yep. wow. Nice combo from Frozen, taking a bit of damage away, uh, or a bit of health away from Coco, which he'll Coco almost immediately get back. Cougar should have expected that, though. He just went to pick up Blue, and he didn't see Zareth. Yeah. Zareth is usually going to be sitting in that brush waiting to I th I think shoot just, you. Honestly, I think he just didn't care. He's like, oh, I'll just heal it up immediately again. Doesn't really matter too much. Goes back, finishes his Will of the Ancients. So he, CJ feeling fine. Maybe a slow game, but everything going CJ's way right now. Yep. And if we know anything about CJ historically, that will probably continue. CJ has never been a big time early aggression team. They've always kind of survived in the mid late game. Sonstar pulled into the box. Hots a lot of first damage on him. Position reverser. And Sonstar still alive. No, he gets taken out by Mad Life, who gets a well earned kill there. Yeah, burned a lot of summoners for that one, but they do make it work. Ambition comes around. They want to take this turret right now. Yeah, well, both summoners burned on uh, on Sonstar as well, and Tucson just with not any up at the during the fight anyway. And like you said, they'll get the turret too. Caught up by that hook, and with that initiation, there's just not a whole lot they could do. Sonstar didn't even have a chance to use Fate's Call right there. Yeah. Instead, they will lose the tower. And CJ just going to push the minion wave right up to tier two. Ambition there. Just on the side, making sure that they have that blocked. Meanwhile, Ares will get more deep wards in the top side jungle of CJ Endis. I mean, the vision again for IM is great. Look at it. Yeah. Great vision. Well, that's what we're used to. You know, like we said, they ward quite a bit. They get the wards in the right places. They just 
sometimes they have two problems. They don't get them down at the right time. And when they do have them down, they don't generally use it. Now, they did use it earlier to take Dragon, but not a whole lot otherwise. Ares over the wall onto Mad Life. He's just going to bring Ambition in. There's a Lantern you want to take, and I don't think that's going to be an execute. Nope, not with the Chilling Smite. And there's an easy kill for Ambition. Ares getting a little bit too deep there with the counter jungling. And speaking of, uh, he knew that there were recalls out of that bottom lane after the tower was down, so you have to be suspicious. He also saw Ambition recalling with the pink ward right by his blue buff, so he knew that there was a possibility that somebody, in fact, two people could have been walking through there. He decided to try and take the Grump. Anyway, Ambition ended up actually getting the Grump with a snowball before he took the Lantern. Wow. And that was it. So this is an example. They get wards down, but they don't use the information that they acquire from said wards to make intelligent decisions. That mid turret is already dead, as you can see as well, and that would put CJ up 3-0. to zero. And so it's a just lot of money. Of, well, yeah, they're playing so patiently and passively and just uh, slowly bulldozing their way across the map. It's Cinder Hulk Lee Sin, too. This is not what you need in this situation. Your hope is that you're using Callista, Lee Sin, and Aurelia to blow up a single target, and yeah. that's just, it's just terrible. So you're thinking you should have gone with Warrior then? Yeah, huh? yeah, yeah, yeah. Clearing faster really isn't going to help too much at this point, is it? I mean, if you don't want to kill somebody with Lee Sin and Aurelia, don't pick Lee Sin and Aurelia. <laughs> don't. That's oh, what they're God. for. Well, they're trying to kill Space here. He uses a position reverser. Teleport coming in as well. Nice snowball to Tucson. Space can't quite get out. There's a kill for Frozen. Meanwhile, Shy in a 1v3 in the back line. So they'll take out Aurelia, but Shy's going to nearly go down. Still alive for the moment anyway. Lilac finishes him off. Meanwhile, a kill for Coco on that mid turret, and he's just going to keep pushing. So trading a couple people in bot lane for a turret and some damage on the tier two as well. And I think CJ's perfectly fine with that. Well, if they don't lose another tier one, then they might lose this one. And Ambition might die. And they're going to lose Ambition. And, oh, wow, gets out on the Lantern. And this means, though, that CJ has, uh, you know, we'll see if they can get the Dragon off of this. Yeah, they've had 40 seconds to set up, but CJ not be playing very respectfully right there. They did TP Shy down, and Lilac's TP came up about two seconds after Shy's did. Right. So they were able to respond, even though they started out the fight very briefly with the TP advantage. But five versus four down in that bottom side. And you see it starts out right here. Space all by himself. I mean, it was a good engage, legitimately. Tucson set up with the Blade Surge and the Fates Call. So he has to react right there. Ambition thinks he can get down there, but he gets killed immediately uh, by the Xerath ultimate. And they catch Shy out at the same time. These tanky members of Incredible Miracle. Shy not able to deal enough damage yet. He doesn't have a Leandri's Torment at this stage. Yeah. You know, I will say, too, that Tucson, again, I feel like he played a pretty good game on Support Aurelia before. He's playing it yeah. now as well, but it's all about that late game. There's a hook onto Tucson. No follow-up, though, from CJ. Yeah, no criticism for his Support Aurelia. He no. plays it very well. It's just not a good pick. Yeah. CJ coming in to maybe stop this dragon. They've got that equalizer. Will they do it? Dragon getting a little bit lower. I am trying to take it. There's a stun end to ambition. Not a whole lot of follow up as far as the poke goes. And CJ just slowly pushing forward. They're going to try to take the dragon now. Frozen still poking with that Q. They lost the Ren stacks on the dragon. Now yep. it's going to reset. So ambition very tentatively poking forward right there. He does have that smite consume combo, so they want to try and take it with that. Oh, they're going to try to, and Nunu does get it. IM goes in, the nice equalizer from Shy, and immediately just blowing people up with all that flame. Tucson low already, Sansar taken out by Coco, who got into the back lines very quickly. He's going to pick up the double. Madlife takes one as well, and there's the cleanup. Frozen on the run. There's the flash. Mad the hook through the wall. Madlife is back. I don't care what anyone says. You can't tell wow. me. You can't tell me that Mad Life isn't back, guys. Oh man, that is Mad Life. Wow, and he could see the Zerath there, but that Amazing. does that does smack of the Mad Life of old. Sure Getting does. a being so confident to make that flash play. I can feel and then it follow in my up, and they're going for Baron, and they're going for a tier two at the same time. I can feel it in my bloodthirsty support <laughs> bones, Monty. Mad Life is back. <laughs> And like you said, they're going to get a couple big objectives oh, off of this as well. well if Mad Life is back, the world will tremble, though, because that is, already is that is something that we haven't seen out of him in a long time. Yeah, let's watch that fight again. Just look at this equalizer. Look at this. That Shy's Shy equalizer too. is so good. Look at yeah. this. He waits for the lineup during the hook, hits both carries. Sonstar tries to hop out of that one, but there's just no getting away. Sonstar, by the way, went for QSS second. 
Yeah. No, yeah. Dam no yeah, damage on that guy. Right. He has no damage, so it was very easy for Coco to get in the back line, but a beautiful fight. Oh, my mad life. Oh, my mad life, indeed. Jeez. Wow. <laughs> what can you say? What can you say? Hook City, right? It, yeah, and that hook, uh -oh. that wasn't the best mad life hook we've seen, but no. it's Still the good. confidence in going in with the flash on that one. And the fact that immediately afterwards, CJ made the right shot call as well. Three onto Baron, two onto the turret. They really maximized their game. What a beautiful play from CJ Antis. Yeah. From the team fight, to the hook, to the decision making afterwards, so perfect. I totally agree with you as far as that it's it's not so much the play itself, it's the confidence. Yes. And that's what Mad Life was lacking, you know? He's got it back. Sure looks like he does anyway in the last few weeks. Now some split pushing with Vladimir, or something very difficult yep. to deal with. And Coco, 250 CS here at 22 wow. minutes. Multiple huge, huge CS lead thanks to the jungle camps he took. He's got three core items already, and he's split pushing he with did. the Baron buff. Easy closure for CJ. CJ playing this out so clean. He did very well in that last fight, too. He was immediately in the back lines all over uh, IM, all over Sunstar. And yeah, he was very good. The coordination. Oh, there's a Hemoplague activated. They got it onto Ares and Tusa. Meanwhile, they're going to turn it around onto Coco. He's going to pull for a little bit of health. Just zoning. It was a zoning engage. They're going to get the turret. And it looks like they're going to get that inhibitor as well, too. Space just poking with that Acid Hunter. Acid Hunter, Acid Seeker. Acid Hunter. Acid Hunter. I was right the first time. Great. And that's an easy inhibitor now for CJ. Yeah, I think this one's going to be a pretty quick game. Coco. Great game so far. 4 0 0 on that Vladimir. Not bad. Not bad at all. Coco is such a streaky player, though. That's the problem, is that when he's good, man, he looks amazing. And he'll be good for a few weeks. Remember how good he was at the beginning of the season, just rocking Faker on while he was playing Ezreal right. into that Ari matchup where Faker had the Ari. And well, or CJ is coming out with that surprise win early against SK Telecom, and then his Jace play was sensational. It he does, just fell apart for a while. Well, it does make you worry a bit, too, because, you know, we're reaching sort of the end. A nice attempt from Mad Life. He's going to come in. Oh, that was a little bit overly bold. Or was it? Lantern, he's going to bring in space. Can they get a position <laughs> reversal? They do. On to Sunstar. Another great play. Ambition slowing everybody down. He's going to take that kill with the absolute zero. Goodbye, Tucson. And they're going to keep chasing Coco. Stop for a moment. And Bishop oh, back. But there's another hook from Mad Life. And Lilac, all the tankiness in the world is not going to save him. Oh. Equalizer <laughs> traps Ares. Man, the plays are so good. They're killing even me. Wow. It's, it's going beyond I am now. And CJ so confident in the follow up, too. Everyone playing around the lanterns and the hooks, following Mad Life in. CJ yep. looking absolutely fantastic in this game. They are going to have to back off the, there, though. They did get. A little bit ahead of the minion wave on that advance, but they picked up a few kills for it. Drag it up in a minute and a half. They can go ahead and wait for that one. They can do whatever the hell they want. Yep. They have well, a 12,000 gold advantage. Shy is an absolute monster right now. Did pick up the Leandries already. CJ really does have the, the highest highs and the lowest lows, don't they? It's quite impressive. We've seen both this season, and you know, right now they're on probably the biggest high they've had yet this season. But the question is, you know, will that last into the playoffs? I don't know what to think about this team, Doa. They are very confusing. It's hard to believe that they're good, but then you see games like this. I think, that for me, the big difference is seeing Mad Life play like this. We haven't seen Mad Life <laughs> play like this in a year or more. But really, I think the biggest CJ conundrum right now is if you think they're good, they're bad. But if you think they're bad, they're good. So you can never sure. actually predict properly. They'll always try to prove you wrong, you know? <laughs> I think their coaches just sort of like watch, the, you know, what the analysts say. Oh, another max range hook onto Lilac. Position reversed, and the next position he'll find himself in is the grave. <laughs> it's the uh, it's the CJ law of inverse skill. <laughs> Whichever you think they are, they will be the opposite. That's true. That's true. <laughs> well, the push in the mid lane now. Baron buff gone now. Another hook onto Ares. Wow, more damage. With that Acid Seeker, Acid Hunter. Uh, Space didn't want to use his ult right there. Guess not. Oh, well. <laughs> you know, you don't want to do it. Well, he already used his ult. Yeah, Remember, yeah, he yeah. used it against uh, Lilac. Sad. So maybe he did want to use it. <laughs> I'm sure he did, actually. How dare you judge? You know, leave Space alone. <laughs> Hasn't he been through enough? <laughs> he's uh, <that's> true. <laughs> the best AD carry of all time.
CJ coming in the mid lane, and they're going to take out this inhibitor turret fairly easily, and uh, the inhibitor will be soon to follow. And will IM try for one last team fight here? CJ doesn't need to pressure this. Aerius coming in. Immediate oh. position reverser. Great catch by Space. Going to go in right on to Sansar Lilac, locked up in the back lines, not doing much of anything. Tucson and Frozen so low. Flash ahead from Coco. Is it enough? Not quite, it looks like. Coco in a bit of trouble. Zonias, can he outlast those spears? Oh, nice stun from Frozen. Catches him right at the end of that one. And Space single-handedly pushing everyone back. Meanwhile, they just decide to take down Maokai in the bot lane. Why not grab another turret or two? Blows it out clean. But man, you saw Ares come in and try to make a play with that Lee Sin kick, and Space immediately, <laughs> immediately hit him with that ultimate. Was quite, quite amusing. Yep. And of course, Frozen's ult not able to secure a kill right there. Not that will quite. Get lanterned out of the base to save him from any possible follow-up. All three inhibitors down, bearing up in 35 seconds. Well, CJ also, I believe they've got that uh, a three dragons right now. Is it three or four? They've got three at the moment, I think. They have one. Uh, oh, well, they're way off then, I guess. One. That's what I meant to say. Now, now they, they have, have two. two. Getting closer. <laughs> Counting is close to math, so. All right, Ambition has Banner of Command, too. so that's happening. Even though Banner of Command is actually a terrible buy in this situation because there are no cannon minions to promote. <laughs> that's true. You, you can, can only promote melee promote and, to... and ranged minions, and that's yeah. nowhere near as good as promoting those cannon minions, especially when you have Baron buffs. So a questionable purchase. They've got two Banner of Commands, in fact. Shy has oh, one, too. Oh, he just got one, too. Yep. All right, well, the, tro the trolling is real. Yeah. Well, why not, you know? They're just practicing for other games where they might need them, you know. They're, they just they they were so they were so mad about GE buying double banner commands against them. They're like, we will pass the suffering onto <laughs> another team. You too That's will right. lose. They're cleansing the double banner command. Except that was a good strategy, and this one wasn't. By <laughs> buying this, though, they're sort of cleansing themselves <laughs> mentally, right? They're like, there. Now we've done it to somebody else. There's but see, easy CJ, bear. that's how the cer the cycle of hate just continues <laughs> forever. Just perpetuating it yeah. for infinity. It's a vicious cycle, you know? Just ask Baron. He just pops up in that same place every game and <laughs> keeps dying. Nobody knows about vicious cycles like Dragon and Baron do. Well, CJ should be able to close this one out pretty soon. There we go. Some big, beefy melee minions, I guess. See, it looks good, but it's actually bad. And it looks cool, yeah. That's all that matters. Whoa, oh what my. an equalizer. That was inc insane. The Hemo Plague hit basically everybody, and CJ just destroys IM. <laughs> Not even close. A perfect ace. Triple kill for Shy. Shy and Coco just eliminated that wow. team. Wow, Shy's rumble is so good. And by yeah. the way, those mega minions actually were wailing on Lee Sin and helped yeah, they did. kill Ares at the end right there. Wow, GG, and CJ Entis takes a very quick, very expectedly fast game number one. But What patience from CJ. They played out that early game pretty well. They had that one mishap with Shy T being into the bottom lane yeah. when Coco wasn't there in a 4v5, but ultimately their map play significantly better. They played the, a patient game, and that is a... Wow, their team fighting is really good. Yeah, Mad Life's plays have been really good. I'm just, this team is really exciting right now. And, and I always feel afraid when I'm saying that about <laughs> CJ because it could just be awful next week. Yeah, but, you never know. But right now, they're Which, really good. I, I hope this continues into the playoffs so it would Me make too. things a lot more exciting, especially that match against SK Telecom unless Jin oh, yeah. Air can rebound from their lackluster second half of the season. Well, that's a big question, right? You know, we've got a bit of a break until the CJ Jin Air match, and uh, we'll see what Jin Air can do. But right now, it's it's all CJ. Victory indeed for CJ Entis and Mad Life. Mad Life is back, guys. He is back. I'm I, I really now. hope it's true, Doa. 